Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be a uh, continuation of the Learn With Me video that I did where I went from Mars to Jupiter. If you recall in that video, I quick saved when I was a few days away from Jupiter. The gravitational influence of Jupiter is down to 0 0.90 and in the last, uh, in the, in the uh, Mars to Jupiter Learn With Me, I brought my periapsis at Jupiter down to 2,500 kilometers, hoping to be able to take advantage of the atmosphere to get some uh, atmospheric braking so that I wouldn't have to do, uh, wouldn't have to use any main engine fuel. Found out in the last video that 2,500 kilometers is quite a bit uh, too high. So we are going to learn again in this video uh, what might be closer to the correct amount or the uh, correct periapsis. So I'm going to bring it down to uh, all the way to a thousand this time and if we burn up then we'll go up from there. We'll just see what happens. So I'm already facing prograde. Uh, let's see if I can just simply do a lateral translation burn to push the vessel to the uh, left rather than having to rotate minus 90 because we're pretty far out yeah yeah you can see here the periapsis is coming down so this will be a little bit quicker than rotating the vessel all right so we're at about a thousand kilometers right there now what I'm going to do is just bump time forward a little bit 10, 100, and I can see that that is continuing to go down. So I'm going to keep an eye on that because if it gets really low, then I'm going to want to do another burn to push the vessel, you know, the other direction. So let's go ahead and warp time ahead now. Go to 1,000, go to uh, 10,000, and actually now it's going the other direction. It's climbing. So now we're getting back up to 1,300. It looks, like it's, it looks like it's going back and forth, so we'll just keep an eye on it here as we're getting close to Jupiter. Let me turn that HUD off just so we got a better view. Now we're climbing again. Nope, now we're going back down again. So we're going to be 57147. We've still got five days to go. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit more. And the uh, texture here at Jupiter should look a little bit better. I installed a higher resolution texture. You probably won't notice much of a difference until you get right up next to the planet. But it should look better. Okay, we're getting in pretty close now. Let's uh, go prograde. And let's go ahead and bump the translation thruster here. Okay, now we're close enough Rotation. that those translations are a little slow. So let's go minus 90. Oops. Spacing out. And I said we're going to go for a, a thousand kilometers. Go with that. Let's warp time ahead now. We're just a little bit away from our closest approach here at Jupiter. Still got 8,000 seconds. Let me go ahead and rotate. So you can see the planet. Might notice a difference here. Yeah, I can, I can see a difference in the textures. It definitely, it's basically smoother. Uh, the closer in I get, the smoother it appears. I remember yesterday there look, there appeared to be like a seam in the texture, and I'm not seeing that now. So this texture pack is definitely a little better. I'll provide a link to it in my description if anybody wants to uh, come to, come to Jupiter and have a little bit better view when you get here. A 
Looks like that texture pack might also be providing sort of a halo. I'm not sure if that was there before. At any rate, let's go... Uh, still got 3,000 seconds to go. Periapsis uh, really close to that 1,000 kilometer. Okay, we're only f 600 seconds. It's about 10 minutes. Let's go surface. And as we did yesterday, we'll rotate the vessel upright. Of course, I say yesterday because I'm recording this video the day after the other one, but it will be a while before it actually gets posted. I don't like to post my uh, videos too quickly because uh, Orbiter isn't a real popular thing, so it takes people a while to get around to watching the video, so if I posted them, like, all at once, then uh, the people that wanted to watch them would have too much content all in one time, they'd be overwhelmed with it, and then I wouldn't have anything new to post for you know, weeks or possibly even months, so basically I record all my videos around the same time and then I spread them out. Okay, so we're going to set the AOA to 45 again. Actually, let me go 60 degrees. Basically, I want to have a good steep angle to the atmosphere. So I'm thinking even a thousand kilometers probably isn't going to be good enough. Well, we'll see. We're still at an altitude of 4,000 kilometers, so we've got a ways to go. Good warp time ahead till that altitude gets down to about at least 2,000 kilometers. Okay, now we're already below the point that I was at last time. Let me engage the AOA hold and let me close that radiator just in case and what I'm wanting to watch here is this eccentricity if this does not come down at all then I'm still too high Turn off the APU. Altitude's down to 1,300. I can hear a little bit of atmosphere now, but I don't think it's. I don't think I'm low enough. The eccentricity really isn't. It's not closing in at all yet, and I'm only 100 seconds away from uh, the lowest point, so. We may get some, I may get some closure here, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Yeah, definitely not low enough. Okay, well, that's that. We're past uh, periapsis, so we're now climbing. Uh, but we, but I've got a decent idea now of where the upper limit is. It's somewhere right there around a thousand kilometers, but you've got to be uh, below that in order to get any braking. So let's go ahead and try this again. Let me exit orbiter. And let me bring that scenario back up. And I'll go through it really quickly uh, the second time. won't really try to, won't take the time necessarily to really explain much. So... So we'll drop down 250 kilometers. All Vanguard systems nominal. Okay, we're already prograde. Let's go. Translation. Translation, and we'll bump the periapsis. We'll, actually, I'll take it all the way down to 500 kilometers to start with, and then we'll move forward until we're much closer to Jupiter. 
Alright, let's just go ahead now and warp time ahead. Okay, we're pretty close now. Okay, now let's go ahead and rotate inward. Rotation. And we're going to bring that periapsis all the way down to 750. I did a little bit of Googling this morning, try to find out a little bit more about Jupiter's atmosphere, where it, you know, where it begins and ends and all that, and didn't have a lot of luck finding exactly what I wanted. And this this process may not be real scientific, but you know, the trial and error aspect of it, it's easy enough to do that I don't mind spending ten or so minutes making a couple of extra trips to Jupiter just to figure out this type of thing. Okay, periapsis is fine. And we're 3,000, 2,000 seconds away. Alright, we're getting really close. Let's go prograde. Now I'll switch over to surface, rotate upwards. While that's rotating, switch over to AOA. And get that back to 60. Go with that. And as soon as we get close to a thousand kilometers, then I'll engage the autopilot to keep our attitude hold. Okay, I can hear the atmosphere, so I'm going to go ahead and engage. And close the radiator. Shift offline. So I have to leave the APU on center for now, so the shift so the center of gravity shift will work properly. Okay, we are 100 and uh, we're basically two minutes away from the lowest point. Altitude's coming down, and uh, we're getting a little bit of closure here. You can see the eccentricities coming down ever so slightly. Uh, it will increase as we get lower, obviously. Uh, we still may not be low enough. We'll, we'll see. Take a look outside. Warning: hull temperature. Uh oh. <laughs> hey. All right. That's interesting. Wish I could shut that noise off. So I gotta think about that. Uh, in, uh, that, that's a, that creates a really interesting problem. We overheated even though we weren't getting hardly any atmospheric braking, so obviously I can't go any lower. Alright, let's try one more time. See what we can learn on a third try. Uh, 750 based on that velocity is too low. We're getting too much drag. But interestingly enough, it's really not low enough to get as much braking as we need, so it kind of creates a bit of a dilemma. Maybe we can't 
All Vanguard systems nominal. I, I can't believe you wouldn't be able to do any atmospheric braking at Jupiter. That just doesn't seem right. But anyway. Prograde. Translation. Bring the PEA down to, uh, let's go 850, but we'll actually go a little lower. Put it there for now, then warp time ahead and make the adjustment as needed once I get closer to Jupiter. Okay, just a few days away, three, four. Okay, we're there. Rotation. Have to remember to keep an eye on the hole temperature this time. Okay, we'll go with that. Let's get the rest of the way over there. Shot. One more time. That's what happens when you get in too big of a hurry. Vanguard systems translation. And I'm usually quite patient. It's just when I'm recording videos, there's a certain uh, crunch for time. You know, you don't want to do things too slowly. All right, there we go. Let's, let's get back over to Jupiter. Okay, we're getting really close. Let's not overshoot this time. Rotation. Let's give that a shot. And again, while that's rotating, I will set the AOA where I want it. Okay. Now I'm just going to warp time ahead until the altitude's down to about a thousand. About right, about right there. Engage the autopilot. And let's look at the hull temperature. A center of gravity shift online. Close the radiator. So we are uh, less than a minute away from the lowest point, not getting a lot of reduction in velocity, and the eccentricity is just barely closing in, and we are getting very hot. We might overheat again. We're going to overheat. We're still too low.
but we're right at the point where you know we need to be but we need to be a little higher warning hull temperature yeah we're not gonna make it warning hull temperature warning hull temperature it's really close warning, hull temperature warning airframe overheating warning it's really close we're climbing right now we, we may actually survive warning airframe overheating because we are warning. cooling off hull temperature all right we survived warning hull temperature I would not want to be inside the vessel warning. but we survived hull temperature so a periapsis of 850 hull temperature is a little on the low side I would say it has to be closer to 900 based on this velocity of course if you manage to get to Jupiter slower than I did but of course we have a problem we didn't close our orbit so it's kinda all for now we're still gonna we're still gonna sling around and go off into you know space so So, what to do? Alright, what I'm going to do is go ahead and end this video. I'll keep it uh, fairly sh simple. And the next time I try this, I'm going to use, uh, I guess I'll just have to use main engines and see what it takes to close the orbit around Jupiter using main engines. But based on this learning experience here, these uh, three attempts, plus the one that was a total failure. Um, looks to me like atmospheric braking may not be the best way to handle Jupiter, which is really unfortunate. Uh, very least, I'm going to have to do some more homework. If anybody has any ideas, please leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, let me know, and I'll see you next time. Okay, now we're close enough Rotation. that those translations are a little slow. So let's go minus 90. Oops. Spacing out. I said we're going to go for a, a thousand kilometers. Go with that. Let's warp time ahead now. We're just a little bit away. Uh, wouldn't have to use any main engine fuel. Found out in the last video that 2,500 kilometers is quite a bit uh, too high. So we are going to learn again in this video uh, what might be closer to the correct amount or the uh, correct periapsis. So I'm going to bring it down to uh, all the way to a thousand this time and if we burn up then we'll go up from there. We'll just see what happens. So I'm already facing prograde. Uh, let's see if I can just simply do a lateral translation burn to push the vessel to the uh, left rather than having to rotate minus 90 because we're pretty far out yeah yeah you can see here the periapsis is coming down so this will be a little bit quicker than rotating the vessel all right so we're at about a thousand kilometers right there now what I'm going to do is just bump time forward a little bit 10, 100, and I can see that that is continuing to go down. So I'm going to keep an eye on that because if it gets really low, then I'm going to want to do another burn to push the vessel, you know, the other direction. So let's go ahead and warp time ahead now. Go to 1,000, go to uh, 10,000, and actually now it's going the other direction. It's climbing. So now we're getting back up to 1,000. 
300. It looks like it's, it looks like it's going back and forth, so we'll just... Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be a uh, continuation of the Learn With Me video that I did where I went from Mars to Jupiter. If you recall in that video, I quick saved when I was a few days away from Jupiter. The gravitational influence of Jupiter is down to 0 0.90. And in the last, uh, in the in the uh, Mars to Jupiter Learn With Me, I brought my periapsis at Jupiter down to 2,500 kilometers, hoping to be able to take advantage of the atmosphere to get some uh, atmospheric braking so that I wouldn't have to do, keep an eye on it here as we're getting close to Jupiter. Let me turn that HUD off just so we got a better view. Now we're climbing again. Nope, now we're going back down again. So we're going to be 57147. We still got five days to go. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit more. And the uh, texture here at Jupiter should look a little bit better. I installed a higher resolution texture. You probably won't notice much of a difference until you get right up next to the planet but it should look better okay we're getting in pretty close now let's uh, go prograde and let's go ahead and bump the translation thruster here 